God in man made money first. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in With you. Let us pray. 
O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from Exodus. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off and when, until he came out, and when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is Psalm 99 on page 3 of our program. Please let us do this in, re in response. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. The Lord is great in Zion. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. Almighty king, lover of justice, you have established equity. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. Lord, Amen. Our second reading this morning is taken from number two, Corinthians. Since then, we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside, but their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the, the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds, but when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. 
We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men. Moses and Elijah talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent in those days, told no one any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, for the Lord our God is the Holy One. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Many of us knew Charlene Baker of the Riverside Church, who passed away last year. And I am sure many of us remember the cards she sent us on behalf of the churches during the pandemic. I'm still keeping the email she wrote in late October of last year when she told us that she had decided to join hospice. The thank Thanksgiving card of last year she wrote on behalf of St. Stephen's arrived at our address a few days following her death. The card and the envelope with her handwriting are sacred to me. They make me wonder about the land beyond the river. Is there another rim beside this world? If there is another rim, 
How close is it to us? How close? In my mind, that world is unknown. But in my feeling, the existence of such world is undeniable. Have you ever heard of the notion of thin place? Thin? Thin place? In Celtic spirituality, thin places are where the two worlds come together and the veil between them is porous. Thin places can be a location like on top of the mountain, as in the minds of ancient Hebrews, or a monastery, a place of pilgrimage, thin place. But thin place can also be a moment, a moment, a sacred pause in the daily life, a stop, a holy stop thin place where humanity seeks God's presence. I heard of that notion of thin place at a clergy conference in Virginia many years ago where an author on Celtic spirituality came and spoke. The Celts have a saying that reads, heaven and earth are only three feet apart. But in thin places, that distance is even shorter. Today is the last Sunday after the Epiphany. The word Epiphany comes from the Greek Epiphania, meaning appearing or revealing. God has revealed his glory in Jesus Christ. God is not an idea. God is real. He is real. God has appeared to humanity. All of today's readings and the psalm are about human encountering the Creator. Biblical people believe that you die if you happen to see God. When I was little and learning Bible lessons and things in Sunday school, I asked my, my mother, Mom, how come we cannot see God? Where is He? My mom said very seriously, no, no, you cannot see God. We humans are sinful. If you see God yourself, you die. That's why God doesn't let you to see him. Now that is, that is no, she didn't make it up. It's from the Old Testament. Yeah, in the Old Testament, in the very book of Exodus, God let Moses come close to God, but not to see God's face. God only let Moses see his back. Okay, in the story. And even then, he was so scared, so frightened, so he bowed down and worshiped God. Moses did not die, but his own face became a source of fear for Israel. They dare not come near him. Moses had to call to them, and when they come near, he gave them the commandments of God. The psalm for today begins saying, the Lord reigns. And the response comes 
with a notion of cosmic trembling because the king shakes loose all the old governance. The Lord is king. Let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord came with radical social transformation. He is a mighty king who loves justice and righteousness. The Lord answer prayer. He forgives those who repent but punishes evil doers, said the psalmist. In the book of Acts, Paul encountered Christ on his way to persecute Christians in Damascus he was blind in that incident, but later he was healed. And after that, he was changed. In today's second reading, Paul tells the Corinthians that the transformation in Christ can make one act boldly. One may overcome fear because of such transformation. Jesus had lifted the veil off our face to see God's glory more clearly. It is his way of making us like him. He lifted the way, the veil, I mean. Every year on the last Sunday after the Epiphany, we hear the story of Jesus and his disciples at that thin place. In the dark of the night, the rabbi revealed himself to them as a divine. They were frightened, and Peter spoke without knowing exactly what he was saying. They themselves, they then found themselves in a cloud and heard the voice calling Jesus as Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior. The transfiguration of Jesus was not merely an outward change. It was something called metamorphosis, meaning like a cocoon becoming a butterfly. The earthly body of Jesus had turned into a heavenly body. The disciples had a rare peek into God's invisible kingdom. Jesus' glory shone through from inside him, revealing him himself as God in the flesh. That dream is so close, isn't it? On the one hand, by faith I proclaim the existence of the spiritual dream. Yet on the other hand, I am fearful and reluctant about entering it. But the more focused we are on the things of this so-called real world, the more anxious we become. To the early Christians, the kingdom of heaven is real. They read scriptures and heard stories of Jesus with the in involvement of their mind, their body, and their heart, their soul. They lived the word of God as they faced the uncertainty and adversity. They let the word transform them. 
the transformation to them was the way the cocoon turned into turning into a butterfly or a tulip bulb into a tulip blossom. In today's collect, we said, grant to us that we behold by faith, by faith the light of his covenant may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. The revelation of the word made flesh does not call us to run away from reality. Instead, it calls us to be seekers. It calls us to spirituality, to bear our cross, and to embrace pain. Psalm 105 reads, Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face continually. You live in the world, but you know you do not belong to the world. While acknowledging our wickedness and sinfulness, you proclaim God's love and forgiveness and the beauty of God's image in every soul. Why not denying your fear of death? You embrace the hope of resurrection. You are after spiritual bliss, but you do not forget the world and its people. Father Morton Kelsey, an Episcopal priest, wrote a book entitled Spiritual Living in a Material World. In that book, he says that in our lives, we should act as if the kingdom of heaven is real. In so doing, we look for a Christian fellowship that is trying to grow in genuine prayer, love, and service. We need spiritual friends. Jesus did not go up the mountain alone. He had his friends with him. Having a spiritual life in the material world is liking to like it is like trying to stay awake when you are weighed down with sleep. Staying awake is a challenge, but in so doing we may see that God is at work. We give thanks for the spiritual friends we have who support us and assist us in the call to bear our cross. We give thanks for the saints who have gone before us. They lived their lives proclaiming the greatness of the Lord. You and I do not understand fully the spiritual realm. We are challenged to embrace the reality of this imperfect life with pain, sadness, conflict, and war. But right in the middle of our many struggles, God calls us to experience the glimpse of that perfect life that God has promised us. As you and I look back at what we have been through in our life journey, we realize that time after time, God was so close to us. So in all situations, we will not lose heart. May we by faith behold the King in his beauty. We pray that we be changed continually 
into his likeness. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me in saying the Nicene Creed, which is found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered dead and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please turn to page five in your worship booklet for prayers of the people, form one. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our bishops and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our cities and towns and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord for seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the good earth which, is, which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for those who travel on land, on water, and on the air, or, or in the air and outer space, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and, and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for those on our parish prayer list, Alan, Millie, Julie, Holly, Michael, MJ, Beth, Joan, Bernadine, Harriet, Stephanie, Pat, Jeanette, Alan, Ellie, Mary, Paul, Joe, Michael, Joyce, Don, Samantha, Maura, John, Brian, Frank, Ron, Nick, Lisa, Caroline, Ethel, Gerard, Charlie, Julia, Laura, Nick, Lillian, Dennis, Gerard, James, Dan, Michelle, Bill, Charles, Barbara, 
Shauna, Baby J, Carrie, Carol, Jane, Aaron, Karen, Chris, Buddy, Jeff and his family, the Grosso family, and Roxanne and her family. And for those who serve in our military and public safety services, including John, Jeffrey, Scott, Joe, DJ, Michael, Gus, Kevin, John, Chris, Matthew, Dan, Matthew, Shane, Grayson, Justin, Joseph, Mark, Jeremy, Bob, Kale, Christoph, Lieutenant Lewis, Kyle, Jeremy, Eddie, Ryan, Andrew, Alex, Elena, Danny, and Stephen. And for those who celebrate birthdays, including Paula, Eleanor, Martin, Jack, Stephanie, Patricia, Lillian, and Barbara, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all of the departed, including Catherine, Arthur, and friends that have passed, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. For the dissolution, for the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, Lord, O Lord, by thy grace. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our Lord. and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Please be seated. Thank you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, 
bring offerings and come into his court. Please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. Amen. The service continues with Holy, Holy Eucharist prayer found on page 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always, everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All of this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
the gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred 
which infect our hearts, break down the walls that separate us, unite us in bonds of love, and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understandings, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.